It's the Lockdown Flyers podcast for Thursday, May 9th. Your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is talking draft-eligible defensemen today. It's getting drafty in here. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with prospect expert Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can find our show over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, I am so excited to talk draft eligible defensemen with you. And I think the first thing we do need to talk about and reiterate, because sometimes people get caught up in the mock drafts, but there's a difference between rankings and picks and mock drafts. And so like, what's your take on how you assess either one of those things? Right. So like me personally, I hate mock drafts. If you pay me enough, I'll do it. Like, I'll do it. I have the knowledge to do it, but I don't enjoy doing it because it's almost impossible to figure out if there's going to be a trade in a mock draft because it really changes things. And there's just, so, you know, there's so many things to it that I'm just like, eh, it's not my, you know, the most fun thing. Now, rankings is my opinion. My opinion, what I think a player is going to do in the future. Like, it's not just what you see today, it's what you see three years into his NHL career if he has one or just five years down the line. That's what, that's what that is. You know, it might even take a player till, you know, to the age of 27 to kind of show what I think I see. So, so there's that. And, and that's a very personal thing. So like, again, uh, everybody could have their own opinions. That's fine. You could use the, like the Bob McKenzie report, which is like a consortium of 10 scouts and then he takes the average. That's fine. But none of it is gospel. What I say isn't gospel and what they say isn't gospel. And because, again, there's a lot of luck to it. There's player development. There's a lot of layers to it. So, yeah, there's the best player available pick. And then there is still picking for need sometimes. And you have to see where the organization is at. Because just saying best player available is just, it, it is a cop out. But... If you say as a GM, hey, we need, we have a lot of needs. I have a needed center. I have a needed, you know, uh, number one defenseman. I have a need uh, for goaltender. I have a need. You know, if you have like six needs, then you're going to go best player available. But if you're desperate for defense, then you might just say, all right, look, we understand that we're going to take a defenseman that, let's say, is a number three and take him over this guy that could be a tremendous second line center. We just have to do that as an organization because, uh, you know, in three, four years, five years, we're going to need the help. So, yeah, I mean, that's the the difference of it all for everybody. So that's a good segue in terms of the big picture on this year's crop of draft eligible defensemen. There's been a lot of talk about it, but what's your opinion on the class as a whole in terms of, you know, your top level guys this is it usual or or typical or is this a better class than normal you know i think the defense uh is a better class than than a couple from the last few years uh when you have freshmen going into you know playing college and becoming like defenseman of the year like that doesn't really happen you know it doesn't happen right. very often so and i'm talking about lift shooting off with that so you look at that and you say, there's a ton of potential there. And I just think at the position, this is something where like the U S program really shines, not so much in having the most talented, super point, the def- high point defenseman, like, a, you know, when a guy 
you get the rare guy that can score like 80 points in the league as a defenseman. Yes, there's a Quinn Hughes and, and that happened. But what I mean is they have a boatload of defensemen that just know how to play. I know how to play the game. I know how to play as they move up the ladder. I know what it takes to, to be a pro. There's a lot of those. And so I feel like this draft has a lot of those. But yeah. there's, you know, as far as top pairing defensemen, maybe only a couple. But after that, yeah, again, just think about if you try any open market to get a three or a four, what it costs you as a team, right? So there's a lot of them. Right. So in terms of the flyers and potentially picking a defenseman here, um, how how does picking a defenseman with their upper pick help the flyers in their rebuild right now? So with the guys the flyers currently have, there's no nothing holding me back from taking any particular type of defenseman because I don't believe there's one defenseman that's on the flyers that is going to be there as a mainstay and super high end all-star for the next seven years. Right. So, so based on that, it gives me a lot of flexibility for the team. So if I feel somebody's number one, great. If there's somebody that's a number two, but can be a top end power play guy. Great. Even if it's a number three, but he's a top end power play guy. Great. Those are things that I look at and I'm like, okay, there's some options here. And that those are good options to have. They are. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, th this is a tremendous opportunity for the Flyers. Um, you know, no matter if or when they pick a defenseman in the first round, in terms of just getting a really good defenseman, it doesn't really matter what kind. I think that yeah, there's room for all of them in the yeah, Flyers' path right now. Um, is there a case to be made here, though, to pick a forward first and then a defenseman later in the round with a Florida pick or vice versa? Or is it really just going off the board in terms of what you do with each pick that the Flyers have? At first, I'm going off the board, right? But if there's a situation where all of a sudden six out of the top 10 picks are defensemen. Well, then now I have to see how that affects my board because that means you're, you, you've you lost six that you probably felt could have gone in the top, I don't know, 13 picks. And so now you have to start looking at what's left and how does that impact me? So now am I getting a number four or am I going for that second line center or or forward that's right. where that's where that strategy starts to come in yeah i think it's definitely a wait and see what happens with the picks as yes. they come to make that decision but that's why they get paid the big bucks to come yeah, up with fluid. these draft boards and right. scenarios it's it's fluid that way they're not in a spot where like if you're a pick five it's really kind of easy at pick five because mm -hmm. usually by then you've had your one surprise at least like, you know, like Shane Wright, as an example, uh, maybe even two surprises. And so now you could really look at that board and say, wow, we thought player X was going to not be there, but he has now slipped to five. Right. So, but what I caution Flyers fans about, and I see a lot of this um, being talked about, it's okay to wish for anybody you want in this draft, okay? But, you know, don't give the impossible wish like you used to give your parents on Christmas, like saying, get me this when you knew they couldn't get it, you know, like what was PlayStation one, whatever, like you knew there was almost no chance of getting it, but you ask them anyhow, right? That's okay. Right. But what I'm saying is in this draft, it's going to be really hard for somebody who you think is going to slip to the flyers. Let's say they're at 12 and slip to them. That's really like an amazing talent. That's a franchise player. Like it's probably not happening. Well, uh, you know, I, I think that it will be a really difficult task for the Flyers scouts and and team there trying to figure out what the best option is. But uh, there are a ton of defensemen that are in the first round range, and there's probably a way to break them up into tiers. So we're going to do that. And these rankings that we're going to use are Russ's rankings on 
nhldraftbuzz.com. There is uh, version 4.0 rankings from April 18th. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, round uh, 5.0 is coming up soon for soon. you. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Maybe like okay. week, 10 days, something like that. All right. Well, we'll talk about it when you do have your updates. But in the meantime, we're going to start with our top tier defensemen coming up next. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. And with their instant match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a post, according to U.S. data for Indeed. One of the things I love about it is it makes it so easy because everything is in one place. They get you one step closer to the hire by matching you with those quality candidates. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your requirements. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. On Friday's show, we're going to debrief on the Phantoms and dig into the season that was for Travis Sanheim as well. Uh, starting with your number five on your rankings, but the top defenseman, Russ, um, Artem Levshunov. Why do you have him as the top defenseman in your list? Because like his year in the USHL was kind of remarkable. Like he, you looked at him and, and he had 42 points and I'm like, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a hard league. Then he comes to the Michigan state and wins defenseman of the year and doesn't look out of place. Looks great all year. Got better, got better all year. Uh, like even the penalty minutes, he, you know, he played 38 games. He only had 44 penalty minutes. He's, he's the top guy there as a freshman. It's just such an oddity. Uh, so I look at him and I'm like, the skating's really good. The decision making is obviously very good because if it wasn't, he wouldn't be able to do that. He's already got a big frame that you could build on. He's got a big shot, the point shot, especially the release is not as fast as I think it could be. Uh, you know, he's playing power play one almost at the very beginning, uh, smart shot blocking, right-handed shot. Like it's like he checks off a lot of boxes. Yeah, we did a full uh, deep dive into his play in December. Um, you know, obviously, other than winning the defenseman of the year, like, has anything changed for him since then? No, I, I think it's just I looked at the field and I don't think anybody could just catch him uh, based on the fact that he's young. He's on the young end of things. and He's going to move on from college. And I, you know, I think he will. Uh, if he doesn't, that's fine. But I, I probably put him in the AHL. But if he doesn't, goes another year of college, fine. You know, either way, I just feel like he, he just has that edge now on everybody. Uh, so yeah, it was the B1G defenseman of the year. So besides being a top ten finalist for rookie of the year, like everything, everything right. you can want, this guy did. And so it's like he's, you know, everything is at his feet right now. He's the sky's the limit for him. And then some for the other guys, too. Don't get me wrong. There's, it's not like these guys are schlubs we're talking about. Right. So your number seven overall, the second defenseman on your list is Anton Siliev, uh, who's a KHL guy. We haven't talked about him yet. And so, you know, he had been in the MHL in previous years, spent this year in the KHL, although they, they sent him to the MHL club for just the playoffs um, Which to is get smart. some more. Yeah, to get some more games in. But um, what is his path to the NHL? Well, he's six foot seven all day long. So he's got that. <laughs> so he's got that going for him, right? Uh, 
he's got a very strong, accurate wrist shot and one timer. Uh, according to Instat, like 46% shots hit the net, 57% puck battles won. It's going to go up. When he gets stronger at six foot seven, he's going to win even more puck battles. Gate, I like his positioning. I think he's got an active stick. He's very good on the PK and he's a shot blocker. And just think about it. If he's sitting there trying to block a shot, where are you going to go? Like yeah. he's taking up a lot of space on the ice. So this is one where you're looking at a super high ceiling. Like this is the one where he's got the basics and now we're looking at what could the ceiling be? And I'm not going to say Chara because that's, he, he's a freak, but you know, if you get into that next level after Chara, like you're, you're laughing. That's a, that's a pretty good option there. Yeah. Uh, your number eight overall, who we've already talked about on the show, is Zeev Bayoum. Um, we did a profile of him on the November 30th show. Uh, it's been a, a bunch of time since then. So obviously he won the title with Denver. <laughs> you know, no big deal. It was a big part of it too, right? I yeah. mean, he was yeah. an inter integral part of winning that. He and his brother. But again, he's even better than his brother. Uh He's he's got runway here, age wise, uh, fast. The the intelligence, the hockey IQ, the smart dumps. Uh, he's physical, and I think he'll get stronger. His skating is really good. Like his edge work, you could see where he all of a sudden he gets the puck and he makes one or two cuts, and now he's like surprised some guys. He's on the other side, and now he's opened up your offense. Right, he's making some things happen. He's got a pretty good active stick too on D. I, I like his D. I think his. Uh, his angles are good too. So there's a lot here, not the biggest guy, but that's okay. Uh, but I think just super effective, very smart, knows the game. Yeah. I think, you know, the fact that you wanted us to talk about him back in November um, allowed me to keep a closer eye on him than maybe I would have otherwise. Right. Right. And yeah, he has just gotten better in my estimation. Better and better all year. Like you could see Since it. Then. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, you know, he was on the World Junior squad yep. this past year as well. I would expect him to do that again or next year. Most likely, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll see there. Uh, by the way, all of these profiles that I'm telling you the dates of are on our spreadsheet. There's a link to that in the show notes with the full uh, detailed review of these guys that you can uh, listen to as well. Yeah. And I just want to say this just in, in reference to our show here. It's not like we've just started talking about these guys. We've been talking yep. about them for months and months and months. I don't know how many players we've actually even profiled, but it's quite a few. It is. We've talked about the next guy on the list as well. Uh, more recently, Zane Pareka, yeah. who's a right-handed defenseman in the OHL. Uh, we talked about him uh, February 15th. And, um, you know, he has had um, a pretty decent season and um, I would say, you know, only 96 <laughs> points in 66 games for Saginaw, <sighs> you know, no big deal. Uh, pretty solid uh, playoffs for him as well. Yeah, and that, that voted well for him. It did. Yeah, I think that's what's made the difference for me between February and now is looking at um, how he, he led that team. Yeah, I like his one-timer. He's good on the power play. He can go either side on the power play. He makes that cross-ice pass. He can go to the net. Really plays in all situations. Right-handed shot again. Hard to pass on this guy. Like, to me, yeah. he's, you know, he could even go a slot or two higher for a team, and I wouldn't be shocked. I really love him. Of yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of defensemen. Yeah. One of my favorites of the bunch. Now, I would say this is where sort of the breaking point is between that top clump of defensemen that are eligible this year. Now you kind of go to mid first round guys, right? Yeah. And the, the first one on that list is Sam Dickinson, who we just talked about on the April 25th show plays with Bonk and Barky on London and is an all round defenseman. And that yeah. was the thing that was most appealing about him is that, He's kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to defensive skills. And so obviously not much has changed since April 25th. No, I mean, him, he's but... not as good as I think he could be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping for a little more. Uh, but look, I there's a lot of teams that like him, people that like him. I certainly like him. I had him in the top 10. He's not in there now. 
he could go back in there. Like he's one of those guys that I'm going to keep looking at. And as longer he plays, the better it is for me um, to keep looking. And, and I'll go back and look at some of the earlier games too. But I look, I look at him and I say, I just don't know if he's a number one power play guy. He does everything else. Well, right. little hockey IQ problem here and there, but uh, very solid defenseman. I mean, he's, you know, almost guaranteed to be a pro and a very good pro. So it's just a matter of where I feel like he fits. And sometimes it takes me hours to, to do that for that next list, just to kind of go over everything and put him up against the field like we're doing now. Yeah. So Jesse uh, Polkinen is a Finnish defenseman, left-hander. We have not done a full profile on him, but I definitely want to uh, as we get closer to the draft. He's 19 years old already, yeah. first off. So he's older He'll come um, over, like he'll play in the AHL, yeah. you know, he's one of those guys. Yeah, so he's um, planning to play in Finland in Liga next year okay, as so, well. So he'll but come over we'll, after that. Yeah, probably, I would say, but has been on Finland's World Junior squad um, and kind of moved up from the U20 to the Liga level um, over the last little bit. Yeah, when he plays against guys his own um, age group, he he can crush them. He's another six foot seven guy all day long, but he's got good speed. He's got a good hockey IQ. He's tough in the corners. <clears throat> Sometimes he's first to pucks. His speed is like um, accelerating with the stick. Like he's actually, you won't say that he does it well for a big man. He just does it well. Uh, smooth wrist shot. I really. You know, once in a while there's a turnover you don't love from him, but younger players that that's going to happen. But again, the size of him is is a very intriguing thing since he has those other he has finesse in his game for a guy that size, like he does, and has that yeah. touch. And so he's an intriguing prospect. And I sometimes I don't feel like I'm hearing enough about him in this draft, but maybe not enough people have really seen him and caught on to him. So I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll definitely do a more extensive look at his game um, over the next several weeks. There is a, a little bit of a jump between this middle tier of guys down to the next tier that could be uh, some guys to look at for the Florida pick for the Flyers. And we'll get to who they are coming up next. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Uh, keep betting the Knicks. You know, they're, Indiana's coach is complaining about the refereeing. That's a sure uh, loser mentality. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. So this, you know, bottom clump of defensemen. Now I say bottom, but this is the <laughs> bottom of the first round. So these are right. all very good. They're all really players. talented. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it's this like bottom tier and, you know, you jump down to the 23rd guy on your list, which is Adam Juracek a right-handed defenseman. We've talked about him a little bit as it relates to uh, world juniors. Um, obviously uh, a brother of David Yerichek, who we wanted the Flyers to pick last year in the draft uh, at that time. And um, he's playing over in Czechia, has a contract for next season for his uh, team in the Czech league there. But uh, what intrigues you about him? Yeah, he, he's a very good skater. He's physical. Uh, he's got some offense in his game. He's definitely has some of the attributes of his brother for sure, but I think faster. I think he's a faster skater. He plays on the right side. That's good. He just, he got injured. So he might drop in the draft. So regardless of where I have him ranked, he could go in the second round. But he's a really good defenseman, and I think he's worth it to go and take the risk on him. So Carter Yakimchuk, uh, we have talked about him uh, back in February and did a deep dive into him, a right-handed defenseman from Calgary, uh, a decently prolific scorer on that team. I say Calgary, I mean the hitmen. 
um, right. in the in the junior league. And so go back and listen to that show uh, if you want a full uh, look at him. But what has changed for him since then? Well, OK, so a couple of things. The reason his PIMS are so high, I had to ask around. And apparently he had to take care of a lot of the dirty work on that team fighting. I think I tracked he had five fights, something mm -hmm. like that. So it's like I don't love my defenseman fighting. We talked about it on the show enough. So um, but maybe he won't do that in the future. So I won't count it against him. Uh, his overall defense eh, needs work, but he does have a great one timer. He's a good passer. He's fast. He's a right handed shot. Sometimes I think he has a little risk on his first pass, but he's a guy I struggle with. Like he could move up on my list still. Uh, I know there's talk like, Hey, the Flyers should draft him at 12. I personally wouldn't, I could tell you, I'm not going to have him at 12, but I know other people that would take him at 12. I just feel like if you take him, you're getting yet another one of these offensive defensemen that have to really work on their D the rest of their career. The Flyers, you know they have one or two of them already, and I just feel like you're drafting at a spot where maybe you're better off getting a guy who's a little more well-rounded. That's me. That's what I would do, but still very talented guy. Yeah, right underneath that at 25, a name a lot of people have been mentioning recently, and that's Cole Hudson, who is a left-handed defenseman, a U.S. national team development program kid, going to BU next year. Uh, what intrigues you about him? Everything. So like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people really have him in the second round, right? But I think I think they're doing him a disservice. I've seen enough games of him over five live where I saw him do some things that I felt like people were looking for him to do, but doesn't do every game. I, you know, fully admit that, but that's what college is for. Right. Uh, just such a good skater. When he gains the zone, you don't know what he's going to do. His edge work is great. Like his brother, he does so many of those same things. And this, the passing is just smart it's always with a purpose always to set up a scoring play you saw him just now in the u18 men's world he looked really good it's um i think at times people want him to be a superstar so they could say well he's 510 or whatever he is um but he's a superstar so it doesn't matter yeah i don't think he's a superstar but i love him on the power play uh, i've seen him score clutch goals i think his body positioning needs work uh but he does he does use his body and he does have an active stick. And if you look at what Lane Hudson looked like this year, I think there's still a picture of it on um, NHLDraftBuzz.com from when I took it at the World Juniors during their camp. He is built, man. Like, remember yeah. how we said Connor Bedard may not be a big guy, but he is like strong in all the right places. Well, well, so is Lane. And I think Cole is going to eventually get there. But there's some people that have other defensemen in this spot. I'm sticking with Cole because I just feel like. If he hits, he's going to hit big. And I think there's a chance that both the Hudson brothers, you know, hit. And that could be, you know, a fun thing in the future. Lane's already yeah. starting to hit a little bit. right? Yeah, that is for sure. Uh, right below that, another guy we've already talked about on the show from uh, December 14th is Aaron Kivaharyu, uh from Finland. And uh, I think that. You know, we talked about him in terms of the U18 tournament yeah. and, and how he looked there. Uh, but, you know, what's your overall take on him based on that? So he's in danger of falling out of the first because I needed to yeah. see a little more at the U18 men's world. But I also have to understand this is his first tournament back. There's so much offense there and smart skating and and shot and, uh, you know, just able to set up a play with a great pass that I really have to look at him and kind of look at him before he was injured again and see, cause the release on a shot is just dynamic and uh, he's really does have a high powered offensive game. So, but he still could fall out of the top 10. He's a guy I'm going to struggle with on the next one. It, it is interesting. Cause you were really high on him when we talked about yep. him the first time, yep. but I just didn't see anything in that tournament that made me you know think that he would stand out 
particularly. Yeah. Um, one more uh, defenseman that snuck into your top 32 here at 31, Will Scan from the U.S. National Team Development Program, going to Boston College next year. We haven't done a deep dive on him. Um, what what excites you about him? Well, I think he's six four. He um, he's strong. He is another guy whose dad is. Um, Involved in the NHL, he's a strength and conditioning coach. And so mm. as a result, this kid's in great shape. Like this kid, there's not an ounce of fat on him. He knows exactly how to do it. He's already at 212 pounds, but I'm telling you, it's solid. So this guy, you look at and you say, boy, if he just does things right, he's going to make it. Now, he did provide a little bit of offense in the U18 men's world. I saw one bad play, but I see a lot of under-the-radar good plays. He is still 17 until May. May 14th. So it's coming up. So that's, that's another good thing. Uh, I just really like his game. I feel like his skating is excellent and yeah, he's intimidating and he's really good on the penalty kill. Really, really good on that. So he's a guy that if he doesn't go at the bottom of the first, he will go somewhere in the middle of the second. And yeah, I, I would love to have this guy on my team because he's a worker. He um he knows how to put in the hard work and he could he could log minutes. So I felt like he had a good tournament too. I did. Yeah, I think so too. Um I, I was really taking a look at him and you know, because he can get points on the board, but that's not all he does. No, but he it's, gets the puck up the ice, right? He's able to get yeah, the puck away from yeah. the defense, the, the not the defense, the other team's uh player and get that puck moving the other way. He's good at that. Really, really good. Right. Right. That's I just thought he had a pretty balanced game. Yes. Uh, so that's what impressed me about him. Uh, there's obviously more defensemen on the board, but these are the guys that made your top 32 in your 4.0 yep. rankings. Yep. We're going to see what happens in your 5.0 in a couple of weeks and um, add some of these guys to our list to have a full uh, look into what they could potentially do for the Flyers as we get closer to the draft. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with our Phantoms catch up and look at the results of our weekly poll that we set out on Monday in terms of a Flyers player re-signing. Can't wait for that. Yep. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun to talk about as well. And uh, if you've got mailbag questions for us or a prospect you want us to dig more into that we talked about today, you could let us know via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at lockdownflyers at gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm at R Miriam on Twitter. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube that's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now on the free Fire TV channels app. Have a great day, everyone.